The purpose of this short video is to show how to set up the IntelliJ IDEA development environment for Scala development. Prerequisites are that you already have a suitable Java development kit or Java SDK for your platform and an installation of IntelliJ IDEA itself. We're using the community edition here. First thing after launch is to check for updates. And here we're good to go. And the next step is to install the required plugins. So we'll go to uh, preferences. We'll scroll down to plugins and browse the repositories. The first plugin we'll grab is not strictly required, but we'll be using Bitbucket a lot. So let's grab that one. Right click, download and install. And the next one is the Scala plugin itself. Click on that one. Right click, download and install. This is a somewhat longer download. So the assumption is that you would have uh, closed the repository browser for the plugins and then um, allowed the IDE to restart. And the next step is to create a new project. And we will want an SBT project. SBT is Scala simple build tool, which allows us to create a project with room to grow in terms of external dependencies. And we'll put this in a suitable place in our directory hierarchy and hit finish. We can close the tooltip. And the first thing to do is to create a suitable source directory by clicking on the Hello Project node, New Directory. And we can create the entire hierarchy source main Scala in one step. And when you do this the first time, the uh, Scala directory might not show up in light blue yet. So you'll probably want to wait until that happens. And then right click, new, and choose Scala class. If you don't see Scala class, um, you will need to wait a little longer until it processes the um, plugin and indexes the jars that belong to the plugin. So let's say we'll create the Scala class. We'll actually want an object and let's call that hello. And we'll turn that into the simplest possible Scala app. So we'll add here extends app and put as the body print ln hello and we should be good to go. So now let's try to run this app by right clicking on hello. And we don't yet see an item to do that. That's because we still need to add a JDK. So let's go to file project structure. And we see here that there isn't a project SDK. So what we we'll want to do, if you don't see a valid SDK here in this dropdown, we will want to create a new, an entry for a new uh, Java 6 SDK. And we will want to navigate to the corresponding Java home on your machine. So in the case of the Mac, it would be um, Java home. And let's try that. And that gives us the default uh, 1.6 Java SDK on the Mac. Let's look at these errors. Um, that will be fixed after we apply this change. And now it's re-indexing some of the jars.
and we should now be good to go. So right click again and indeed now it says run hello. So let's try that. And there's a little error and this is a bug in the Scala plugin as far as I can tell and the workaround is to create the missing output directory manually the first time. So we'll create, as it says down here, uh, target slash Scala 2.10 slash classes. So hello new directory target Scala dash 2.10 slash classes. There might be another error message that we can probably ignore. Let's check and try running hello again. And it worked. Here we go. All right, so we successfully uh, created a very simple Scala app project and we're able to execute that project. So this workaround is necessary only the first time you set the project up. Okay, uh, one other thing I want to illustrate is uh, Scala worksheets, which are useful mechanism for just playing around with code before you make it part of an actual app or library. So we can create a new Scala worksheet and we'll just call it um, Hello2 and here we can just write some Java code. So for example, val x is three, and then x, and now we can say run. And it just executes all the code on the worksheet. So you see here that it was able to define x, and then to evaluate x, it just evaluates that expression and uh, returns the resulting value. So if we change the expression, we can re-execute the worksheet. It'll um, update that expression accordingly. So we can probably have multiple expressions here. Let's try that. Yeah, so basically, you know, you can keep modifying this and experimenting. And once uh, your code fragments are ready to uh, be incorporated into the actual project, you can just uh, copy and paste those. Okay, so that's it for now. I think this will help you get started and we'll be back with some more advanced stuff sometime soon.